Next item will be, will be concept review continued for 125 State Street. I'm going to read the motion so that the commissioners may re-familiarize themselves. The motion continued four weeks with the following comments. Number one, the roof garden is supportable. Number two, in order to make a more specific assessment regarding compatibility of the proposed building to its surroundings, the following are requested. An historic structures report with special emphasis on the impact of the proposed project on the historic setting of the Singleman's building and a computer model of the proposed building in its entirety and in its context with the train station and the signalman's building. Number three, comments with regard to the mass bulk and scale will be withheld until the two requests are fulfilled. Four, simplify the building in terms of the monochrome treatment and other aspects in order to achieve compatibility with the EPV guidelines. The proportions of the tower need to be more traditional and express the massiveness and the wall thickness of the openings. Will you introduce yourselves for the record? Madam Chair, member of the board, uh, Barry Burkus, architect. And I'd like to take 20 seconds in the front to show you something to make the board proud of themselves, which happened today in Santa Barbara, if I have your permission. 20 seconds, go for it. 20 seconds. This is the Granada Theater today at about, oh, maybe 1 or 2 o'clock. It's 1,400 children bust in to listen to the symphony. And it was phenomenal. Every one of those kids was quiet through the whole presentation. All of them clapped. All of them enjoyed it. All of them were exposed to music. They were of all races and colors, and they came from Lompoc to our own schools. Which you am. <laughs> it was beautiful. Nothing. But it, I just wanted you to see that because you approved this building, and it's become something that's being used for the community in a lot of ways that you should be proud of. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would like to start by answering your comments that you gave us last time we were here, going very quickly because I know that we're short on time, and I'd also like to show you how we've responded to those comments in a way that I think um, answer, I feel, the questions that you gave us. Um, the best way to do that probably is to look at the screen because the screen is going to be in a graphic manner that will show you the pluses and minuses of the buildings that we did. So if you can... The yellow is the building we presented to you last time, which is a 20-foot setback, six feet from the Sigelman's building all around, which you stated was too tight, didn't honor the building or celebrate it enough. And so that the form of the building is as you see it. The next slide shows the orange or the rust color, the terracotta, which is what we subtracted. And so in order to take and view the Sigelman's building from State Street and see air between it, we cut the orange out. So we set the building back 16 feet from the signalman's building, and we also um, took the footage in the building. It is the same as it was. We also set the building back 28 feet instead of 20 feet. The only thing protruding in front of the 28 feet, the tower is 20, is a ramp for ADA to get into the building, which probably will be a mod because the building's up three feet off the ground because of the floodplain and uh, FEMA. So we have that, which we have shown you. It hasn't changed from the beginning, but I wanted to call that to your attention. The blue, then, is the added portion of the building, which, which we subtracted from the rust or orange. We added into the courtyards and towards the rear to lighten the scale of the building and soften it to the rail, the street, and the public in general. Next, please. So if you look at the second floor on the building, as we go up, you can see that the building was at six feet off of it. And the next slide will show you where we've cut that back, which is really considerable. We're back something around 16 feet once again. Uh, on the uh, on the side that's towards the rail, and we have the blue added, which was in the internal side of the building, and we've handled that in a way of creating a garden along the edge, which we'll show you in several minutes. But the building functions for us well. Now, um, Alex had talked about massing and window openings and tower configuration. You can see that we've increased the tower to become more traditional. 
and I'm going to go into that in, in a couple of minutes. But you can see where we've removed building on the second floor and above so that we could end up creating more gardens towards the uh, State Street approach from the freeway and also from the rail. So the footage in the building is within 100 square feet of where it was before. So we haven't violated anything there, but we've answered the questions we feel. The bottom slide on the left was the building we had submitted. Well, the first one on the right, far right, July 9th concept. Uh, the comments were that the windows didn't line up over the columns, the structure was not traditional, that it essentially was too playful, the tower was not a tower, that it was more of a campania. So we went back and looked at it again, and then as we came into you on the lower um, left, we still had the tower, but we went to some OG arches, and we were told at that time that it was a little bit too active. So we went up above, and that is a tile surround. It's kind of a uh, Aton uh, gaudy type of a tile with plates in it, but it went into the uh, traditional arches of the uh, of the region, and also started arching the window heads, and so that it met more of the uh, PV guidelines. So what I like to do is rotate around the building and show you what it looked like from the side. Well, maybe go back for a second. Can you do that? See, there's air on the top slide. There's air between the Sigmund's building and the building of ours now. So you are now, not if the if you go further up, you get more air. But essentially, you're seeing that building stand on its own on a placita, which is being celebrated by putting a paved pattern around it and creating um, icons that will let people know the history of that building and then fencing it properly with the tube fence that is the existing fence in that area, then maybe a Shelton fence inside that, but we'll talk about that as we get to detail. Um, the slide on the top and the bottom, you can see the difference as uh, Alex, we introduced the tower form, which is more traditional. We cut the building back considerably and put more gardens on the edges of it. We took the windows and went into deep set um, arched head windows and we ended up trying to give a lot more room around the Sigmas building, which is we worked closely with the historians, with the board, with the earth uh, considerations, and then developed a building that we feel met their program, but still met the, uh, the comments that you made. Next, please. So if you look at it from the back coming in on the rail, what we did was create a tremendous amount more landscape, as you can see on the slide um, on the top. And you can see the Sigma's building, it's hard to see how much room you have in there, but it's considerable. It's minimum 16 feet, then it drops further back as you come in from that edge. So the top, and we've talked about this, Robert, about the trees. We haven't done the landscape plan because we really want to get the footprint um, set with you so that you are happy with the configuration of the building, then we'll go into landscape. But it will be fruit trees. It's an edible roof, as we talked about. It's an experience for children to go grow, eat, stay, and become part of nature. And so we're doing that with the roof. And then the second step down, the landscape is softening it from State Street and the train and creating something that is organic with dropping vines along the edge. I'm not going to give the botanical names because I'm not sure I'm confident to do that. Next slide, please. So let's, let's go around the building for a minute. You can see that the Lions or the Beacons building in the foreground is as big as this building, that we have the Reagan building that is large that's on the other side. This is the new uh, proposed project on the, uh, for the old Entrada site. And then as we come up to our building, you can see that as we rotate and come around it, that is essentially in scale with a lot of the bigger buildings around us, like the uh, Reagan building, which is up on the north side. And as we come around the tower and start looking at the rail, you can start seeing how the Sigma's building stands in the Placida, which is fenced and open to the public during the day so that we can give them something that celebrates that space and how we've now gone into deep set uh, arched head windows that are more traditional. And I'm going to ask you to bend a little bit in a couple of seconds. So I, I wouldn't expect you to think anything different, but as we go around the building then, the landscape is not there, so you're not seeing the soft parts of, that really are hiding those step backs. So as we, got, we rotate around the building, um, and can, we're going out to State Street now and then up to the freeway, I believe. As we come up to the freeway, which is we're getting close to now, um, you're going to get the feeling that as you look down at the California building, we're in scale. As we look at the Reagan building, we're in scale. As we look at the Beacons building, which is far to the left, we're in scale, and the mass bulk has started to pull itself into one story. We did a lot of one-story stepping in order to make the building configure in a way that respected those buildings in its environment. 
And as you rotate around the building, you'll begin to see the big buildings on the other side, but we have also set back on the back of the building. You asked us to not expose the trash doors to the street, which we came around the side on, and we will, you can see them there. And I'll show you that when we get down to the plans on the table. Um, we also simplified the building a lot, so the, um, the first building you saw had a lot more detail and ornate form to them. But there's the Sigmund's building in its Placida Court, which will be available for the children and adults to go in and look at the historic plaques and the, the uh, references that were spoken to by the historians. So that's pretty much the fly-through and its context with its neighbors and the setbacks that you see. And the only thing that intrudes in a setback is in the plans you have on the table is a trash enclosure, which I'll talk to you about when we look at the plans. And the round section, as you know, is really the theater. It's the back of the uh, amphitheater and stage for the courtyard where the children can do everything from puppet shows to uh, live performances and acting on their own. How long did it take you to program that? <laughs> so last time we met with you was how long ago? Um, I'm going to tell you something very interesting. We programmed it uh, right in back of me. Uh, Jason uh, Bockhaus is really a phenomenal computer technician, but it was sent to, uh, to Argentina. And Argentina did a lot of the programming for us and sent it back to us. So we've been doing outsourcing with it. So it's been, what now, Jason, how long? M about a month. Uh -huh. Oh, Karen, I thought you pulled an all-nighter. Well, <laughs> look at my eyes, man. <laughs> That's not all age. <laughs> the animation was Yeah. Very disappointed, no moving train. <laughs> you know what? Next time you see it, you'll get it. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I'd like to, in saving time, I'd like to go to the drawings now so that we can look directly at those pieces that, uh, that we responded to you on flat, and I don't know if there's enough sets to go on all uh, around the boards, but I believe there are. Um, what we did, we're back 28 feet now, and we're 20 to the tower, and we're sitting back 16 feet from the uh, Sigmund's building, and we have 16 feet from the Sigmund's building to the east, and this then drops back to a huge plaza. So this will all be developed as a place for sitting and watching the trains, but it's protected by a fence. Right now the rail that is described by the historians is a fairly simple pipe rail. And what I'd like to do when we get down to it is look at maybe putting an ornate uh, fence in back of that so we have safe uh, enclosure for the children. The loading zone, we bought our trucks back and we loaded to the side so that the door was not open to the neighbors. Um, as we come through from the front of the building, I'm, some, some of the members haven't seen this. What we're doing is controlling the whole building from a desk here, and then this is all gallery. The reason for the size of the tower is that we actually have a climbing net or a display, part of the exhibits, in the center that the children walk around going up to the second floor. Um, we've ed added the second means of egress and done all the code work on it also. So these are all galleries. Then they open through a nano wall or a folding door system to the outside courtyard, which really will be seating for the theater. So all of the setbacks, all of the things you talked to us about, of opening up the site and decompressing that uh, relationship with the Sigma's building has been done, the setbacks. The only mods we may ask for if we're asked by the city to do that is a ramp system to get us up to the three feet, which is to get us out of the flood zone, does come in front of the 20 feet. And then in the back, we have a trash enclosure right in here someplace, which is in that. And we didn't want to put it in the back here because it pushed the Sigmund's building. So we felt this was a good place for us, fully fenced and won't be seen by the neighbors. So the second floor is all open gallery, and um, it, it ends up with um, storage. Let me see if I can get the right documentation. Here we go. The second floor basically has a bridge that ties us back into where the uh, receptionist and executive wing is, and that bridge is a gallery. And it looks down into the courtyard, it shades the stage that sits out in here, and it gives us the ability to shut down and shut down this so in the evening people can get to the uh, executive section and leave the museum closed. Two-story volume looks down into the entry here, way back here with gardens wrapped all around it, towards the train station, and this is 22 feet deep here to that wall. 
so it's going to be completely away from the segments and the, uh, the, the tracks. The roof, uh, we're showing a paved pattern in the center, which will be an interlocking system that will sit on top of membranes, and all this is pickable, edible gardens, and be all around here. And that's yet to be really figured out. And we also have an observation place to bring the, uh, the children out around an oculus that looks down into the museum and then out to the city in the mountains inside of this form that will have a fence around it up to 42 inches. So that gives us the ability to oversee the city both ways. So this is where we went with the elevation. This is tile, not stone. And these plates are basically the gaudy plates that are essentially ceramic plates. This is the wave wall, which is on the ramp coming up. And most of this has not changed, but this has changed radically um, to meet your um, comments of the past. Then all the windows have changed. And then this is not shown in plan, but we think that we're going to do a trellis down the side. We're not there quite yet. This is the fence that we'd like to do inside the historian's fence that relates to the, the uh, pipe rail that's around the train the rail station. Now. The back of the building with the theater on it and the, uh, the tower, which is a stairway tower here, and that's the only reason that it is. And we're looking at a building that's 40 feet high except for the stair tower and um, some of the parapets over the stair. I think that other than that, we meet the demands. And this, these pictures I've shown you before of what the inside will look like and why we're trying to go somewhat gaudy-esque. And the, the other thing I'd like you to look at is this is the computer modeling of the, uh, of the building. And this is a side view, but I'd like you to kind of consider thinking about something that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I don't know, Jason, if that photograph is here. Yeah, if I can have that, please. I want to keep the tower and everything the way you've talked about it. But I'd like to do this if I can, because I think it's a little more playful and tells the children it's their building. I'm open for comments on that. And I think that this is something that works with this. And I'd like to introduce that to make it a little bit more playful with a tile in it and then maybe tile it, pull the tile back in there. I think I'm about done with everything I'm going to say, and it went pretty quick. Um, Parking, we've got the parking down to two on site plus bus, bus drop offs. Um, we have uh, the fly through that you asked for. We have, we've done everything you've asked for. So, for the third time, but this time, really doing it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much. Would you two like to introduce yourselves for record in case you're going to be speaking? Sheila Cushman, Children's Museum Executive Director. And George Myers, Children's Museum uh, Building Committee. Thank you. I'm going to ask for public comment. Thank you. Yes, much better. <laughs> Kellum DeForest, I want to thank Mr. Burkus for his revised plans. The signal building now is no longer swallowed up by his building. He's done a wonderful, jo a great job. A couple of questions. Uh, or a couple of comments. Yes, thank you. Uh, one of the, uh, I, I question the need of the stone facade on the State Street Tower, and I hope that the, or oh, I would like to see the stairway tower, which is over 40 feet, uh, uh, made as small as possible because I think it, especially from the railroad station, it stands, it's too prominent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask for questions from the commissioners. Mr. Schellenberger. Just a uh, minor thing. First, well, I'll get into comments, but um, this planter over the, at the second floor level, which is above the first floor right. um, on the north end, only because it might affect um, design later. Do you need access to that? Would you need a door, and then therefore would you need a railing around that? I mean, I'm just, how that might affect design. 
right now we have not planned access. If we do that, we will have a 42-inch rail, and we will put a uh, door system for maintenance particularly, and we don't want the children there necessarily. Thank you. Mr. Drury. Uh, um, Mr. Burkus, when you show those two photographs, you have I have one that's, that's the, um, the new proposal with the large arch doorway and two arch windows right. above, and then there's a, I think you say you preferred that one. You, you said Gaudi-esque. Gaudi yes. Yes. But you prefer that one. That's if it would be my pleasure, but I don't want to slow this process down. <laughs> I've had my hands. No, no, no. <laughs> this is this is important though. So yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank oh you. I do have it. The, that um, rectangle that cuts across those two big windows, would that be tiled um, in the same tiling? Is that what I heard or did I, did I not hear it? We're looking at this being probably a Santa Barbara stone and the containing a mosaic tile, much of the things that you see in Barcelona. And that in answering um, Mr. Uh, DeForest's question, this is not stone, it's going to be tile. Okay. And so that it probably will pick up the same color when we come back to you on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Murray? Um, what is the height of this wall here uh, in, re in, in, sort of in relation to the... The, the, the one-story wall? Yeah, the one-story wall. Oh, let me see that. I think we have that. Yeah. Fourteen feet. It's a fourteen-foot plate and probably a three-foot joy system. It's probably seventeen feet, but to the top, plus three feet for the um, above the floodplain. Yeah, pretty close. And it's a wave wall, so it'll drop down below that. And if it drops below that, and we have a rail system, the rail system will go between these slopes. Probably twenty-three feet. At the highest point. Yeah. Twenty-three feet. Any other questions? Yeah, um, I have a question. Um, let's look at the the floor plan of the whole. Or, or um, I guess I'm not. I'm not quite. I'm, actually, this is adequate. What's going on up here? Why? Why the need for the tower? What is that? An elevator shaft? No, what is it? Yes. It's elevator shaft and stairway, and uh, we have two elevators in the building. I have to show you that. Before. One that is for service from the storage area on loading, and one that is passenger. So best to look at it probably on the first floor. What we've done here is we have the passenger elevator here, and stroller storage here. The elevator you're looking at. Robert is back here, which is basically, as we load, we come here and we bring our exhibits to the second floor, and that's only used for possibly food, but maybe uh, exhibits in most cases. This is the passenger elevator at that point. And the stairway here takes us up. Now we're going to the roof, so we need two means of egress from that roof, so that's why you see that form. Above, you need three feet above the elevator, so you, that'll go to the roof also. So that's why you've got the form right here. Can I piggyback on that question? The service sure. elevator for exhi exhibitions, I understood that for most museums you need about a 13-foot cube to get into that elevator. Well, the exhibits in this museum, we don't have 20-foot paintings or 12-foot paintings. Most of the exhibits will break down, and most of them will come in that form. And the exhibit committee is going through that right now. It would be wonderful to have a larger elevator. We have two things that we're concerned with, one square footage, two is storage space. And three is that we think from what we've seen so far in the design that we won't have exhibits of that scale. Okay. Further questions? Got a chair. Mr. Suiting. Mr. Burkus, is it possible to get from the gallery space out to Signalman's Placida, recognizing that there's a three-foot elevation difference? We'd need to do that most... Well, let's just say with ADA. We have ADA out the front. Maybe we don't need ADA out the back of that building. Maybe we can step down that since we have access from the front. Okay. Possibly. I'd like to okay. discuss then, that. Then I'll follow up with a comment. Thank okay. you. Any further questions? Let's go to comments. Madam Chair. Mr. Suiting. See how I follow procedure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it would be important to um, get the children out into the signal, signal in Um Most children I know like trains. 
So if there can be a way to get those children out to that, I think that would be important. Let me answer one thing if I can. I don't know how you want me to handle this. Uh, I think he's just asking you to try and do that, but you don't need to tell him how you're going to solve it yeah. now. Well, there's, if he hasn't been on the board looking at it, and there's one comment, I'll make it very quick. We're going to set this up with lights that go on when the train comes into proximity. Uh -huh. and so they celebrate by coming to the windows. Okay. So the idea, we know we have acoustic issues, and we know that we're going to have children running to the windows to see the train. It's going to be celebrated within the building, and the doors to the outside will discuss with the board. Okay, Thank you. very good. Um, then the second comment I have is um, we need just a little bit more landscaping on State Street. And I'm hoping that you can carve out three or four feet of this entry plaza and move everything back so that there is some landscaping where that handicap ramp is. Um, as you know, landscaping is very important, particularly um, to give a building pedestrian scale and to help ground a building. Thank you. Mr. Thuding, can you comment on his request regarding the alternative ele elevation, and can each of you please um, comment? Yeah, I, I'd be happy to. Um, I, I, you know, this isn't my favorite style of architecture. I do, lock, do like Antonio Gaudi, um, but I guess I really haven't digested uh, his work <laughs> enough. Um, that being said, I think I like the first, because I'm just a little bit more traditional. I haven't been able to get out of the box yet. Madam Chair, yes, Ms. I was just going to make the comment that I too prefer not not this one, but the one with the single arched opening. Um, perhaps, I'm sorry, I'm not tracking correctly on that one. Let's just call Can we that call one that one one, one and not two? Thank you. Yeah. Wait. Just ho, ho, ho. This is two, three. This is that one. Having set up for a long time out in the hall, uh, I don't want to have this go on forever. Uh, I would like to say that I think that uh, in many ways this has really, really improved. Yes. And I'd like to thank the, everybody. Yeah. You mean this one then, correct? Just the, the whole project. Yes. yes. By thank pulling you. in the building and everything. I think I, I forgot to mention that. And that's thank you. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, speaking to the two elevations before yes. I get started. Thank you. Um, I, this is workable. What bothers me is the relationship of the arches to what's happening down here. They, to me, they fight each other. So I would prefer this, but I think this is workable. And you could get something, your signature on there in some better way than that. Uh, it concerns me that the building relies heavily on the roof landscaping. And so I think the choice of plants, the mandatory maintenance of that and the irrigation and all is very very critical or or the whole concept is blown out of the water i i think the floor to floor height is a little excessive it's 14 feet i could see 12 to 13 maybe it it pulls it up out of the children's scale and gets it more into an adult scale that i think is uh yeah from the interior, and I think it it's not in the children's scale from the outside also. So I would heavily suggest that. And I, I would think that you should pull the uh, service elevator into the building more and not have it a feature on the outside of the building so awkward, in my estimation, hanging out there. And it's easy to pull it back. So I, uh, that, those are my comments. Thank you. OK. Yes. Um, I would agree with Commissioner Sharp. I, I like the I like the Gaudi esque um, version. I do think that that rectangle that comes across, be, uh, intersecting those arches, fights with that rectangle at the bottom. Either way, I, I think it's vastly improved. And the only negative comment I would have is that I think that the color of the tower could be a little less strenuous, just a little, just step down a little bit. Um, but I think it's I. I I think that children, I know children love trains. I think it's a perfect place for a child's museum, and it's, it's um, come an awful long way. I very much appreciate the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, thank you. This building, um, you, you, you simplified it. Um, uh, I, right now, the way it looks, I, I like this alternative much better. It, there's so much 
play that you're doing anyway with the gardens and and uh, different archways and things. I, I think it reads, but again, continue to explore that. This just doesn't work quite yet. Um, we need a, a really important tree. Can we see the plan? We need to find, I agree with Commissioner Sudin's comments, we need to find more landscaping in the front. But we need a really great tree right here. In this corner, very important from maybe framing the view out a window or whatever, but we need a tree. Uh, I was, um, I couldn't agree with Commissioner Sharp's comment more that that tower on the edge of the building is just too much. It, it really needs to move in. And then um, this is probably out of my pay grade, but I, I do think you should really fight for the larger elevator. We, with the museum like this, we just don't want to limit the possibilities because something was built too small. But again, that's above my pay grade. And... Um, it's coming along. I like the really like the relationship of, to to the train station. So some of the subtle um, connections you're making with shapes and and colors. I, 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 it, it's more credible. So thank you for your work on this. It's coming along beautifully. Thank you. Further comments? Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's great, I, but I always did, so <laughs> I, you might have ruined my credibility here if I, if I already liked yeah. it before. <laughs> but, um, you know, this, this request for the different facade is, is interesting to me. I haven't seen that in my time here, and, it, and so I, as I was sitting here thinking about it, I, I thought, that's really interesting. You know, Mr. Burkus is, is a prominent local architect, and that is a criteria that we look at in historic structures reports, for example. So in 50 years from now, Mr. Burgess's work will be, will be looked at in that same kind of uh, vein, looking backwards. And, I, and it occurred to me, I, what, what if James Osborne Craig, we heard earlier today, or Bertram Goodhue, we heard earlier today, came in back then, if there was an HLC, and, and requested, this is the version I like. I mean, could you imagine somebody telling him no? It it, it doesn't seem right to me. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> well, I understand. I'm, I'm just saying, it's significant to me that a prominent local architect <laughs> is actually asking for a certain facade um, specifically, not not uh, working through the process. And I'm. I like the design anyway, so I'm, all, I'm, I'm already inclined to option two, but, um, but this consideration, I think, needs to be um, considered. Yeah, acknowledged. Thank you. So um, it, it all looks great to me. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Dury. I've been reflecting on the, the Gaudi-esque uh, version, and I, I think that uh, Commissioner Sharp is correct that it, it there's um, a good deal there to to recommend it. I'd like to see that explored. I, I would. I, I think Santa Barbara is full of quirky buildings, historic quirky buildings, and this is this is one where the 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 um, mass of quirks has has been um, toned down. And I think that um, I think that this building should be somewhat quirky because it's children are quirky. So I'm going to move your vote over to the other side. I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to vote the other way, yes, okay. to the Gaudi side. All right. Mr. Pujol. Yeah, I, uh, I was a doubter once. But now I, I believe in this museum. No, I, I think... Um, I think Barry has done a great job, uh, especially moving the, the mass of the building, moving it away from the from the segments uh, building, pulling back, and the relationship. I think is very well done. Uh, I like the the fence. I like the, the fence he's describing that is shown in the um, well, in the visuals, in, in the graphics. The um, 
Uh, I think the north and, uh, and east uh, elevations are, are better done, drawn and, and thought out. And the east and west are considered secondary. And especially the west is very visible. It's the one that you see from the train station. And uh, I agree 100% with Mr. Sharp's comments on, 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 the, on the west elevator. I think that come to liver peace, it, it seems awkward. It seems like it doesn't quite fit. Uh, I, I do like the uh, overall mass bulk and scale of the building. I think it, it's starting to really fit. Um, I, I must say that each time we see this, it, we see like a completely different building. It's kind of like, whoa, okay. <laughs> so it's hard to, to make comments because I, I think, well, gee, if I say I don't like this, then it will come back completely different. And it, it's not meant that way. It's meant like, you know, we, we have something to work on and then, well, you just kind of refine it and you take it to the next level as opposed to throwing everything out and come back with a complete new set. Um, along that vein, I, I say that the... Um, I like to see the next, you know, as it moves along, that the, the thick wall expression is throughout. Like you show it on the north and, 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 and east, but it should also be seen, especially in the west and maybe a little bit on the, on, on the south as well, so the, the, the windows are uh, deeply recessed. And, and maybe you meant to do that, but in the plans, and if I look at the plans, it looks like two by six walls or maybe two by eight walls. It's not very clear how, how thick they are. And another thing that, you know, it puzzles me is, is the, uh, the, uh, the fenestration, like, um, uh, and I, by the way, regarding that, I, I, I think you could go either way, but as, as long as the whole thing makes sense, because I see some windows that are extremely traditional, the two windows, it look like an Italian Renaissance kind of set up, like the ones you show right now on A, right? And they appear in, in two or three pieces, and then you have these other ones that are square, and it seems very random sometimes the way like on the south elevation you use both together and uh, I, I don't quite understand the, the logic behind or, or how they all make sense I think on this style of architecture uh, squ uh, being that the openings are small all square windows make a lot more sense but you know I'm sure you work it out I mean so something which more one of these are you either one I, I agree with Mr. Sharp. I think the, uh, right now the, uh, the, the, the number two has problems. Number one also is not, I mean, uh, it's not great yet, but it will be eventually, but we need some massage. But uh, I, I agree with the preference the, 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 here. Yeah, I think both have potential. They can both develop to be, to be good, but the number two has more problems. It has, has in, uh, internal inconsistencies, but it's more varying and, and it could work well if, 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 if properly um, developed. No, I don't mean to, you know, to come back and bring the third thing completely different. <laughs> it's just, you know, work it through. So in, I'm not sure where we're going. If we have to see one more time, we're going to the Planning Commission next. Um, I think in terms of mass bulk and scale and relationship to the, uh, uh, to the uh, historic structure and so forth, uh, I'm satisfied it's starting to work pretty well and we can work with whatever comes out of this. Uh, later on, I would like to see some reworking of the details. I think the upper, the, the, the top level of the tower is a little bit odd. Uh, the, the, all, the, all the arches are different in sizes, and the, uh, the, top on, the space on top of the arches is not, I don't know. I think it needs some, some, some work still. But it has, it has the seats for being a great building. Thank you. So there. Thank you. Ms. Boucher. I would just like to say I agree <clears throat> with another thing from Mr. Sharp. <clears throat> Excuse me, and that's the fact that I think that it could be reduced some. I, I agree that that it's it's the the height of the, of each each floor is more of an adult scale. We're not talking about we're talking about some fairly big children here, but still, I don't think they, that the, the ceilings need to be that high. Okay. Is there anybody else who wishes to? Well, let me ask a straw vote because that is a critical factor. Is who believes that these four to floor heights are too high? Made you raise your hands, please. Well, well I, I, need to, I don't know if Craig was going to say it, but you know, sometimes it's not just the people that are in the museums; it's the exhibits too. Exactly. Yes. I like to talk about. It. Well, let me just see where where we are. You may not have to talk about it again. Who thinks that the four to floor heights are too high? One, two, three. So Maris, not a majority. Okay. Yes. Okay. I've saved you. You saved me. From talking. Okay. Um, Ms. Murray. Um, yeah, the, the reason why I voted with, with trying to um, massage the height, uh, the plate height, is because 
really from the setting of the historical setting of the, the depot and all that, this is the only tallest building that is right near the rain, train track. Um, be, you know, the Reagan building is, is on the stage, but it, it's recessed. It's, it's sort of back of the train station. So really when you come from the south and from the north, what you really see is the height of this building and you'll see the Reagan in the back, and you'll see these other buildings reaching in the back. And so, um, um, uh, while I'm very uh, glad that, um, you know, you pulled it back away from the signalman's building, um, uh, I, like, I like your project. I'm just looking for ways that you could still further um, make it not so tall, because it will, it will be a dominant thing when you come in, uh, it will strike you. And because of the decorative parts and so forth, it will strike you. And, 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 it, and you don't want that overwhelming the sense of the train station. I think that's, that's you agree with that. So that, that's why I agree with that st uh, comment, not, not pulling you into, I mean, I do understand museums too have to have height and open, you know, for exhibits and so forth. but. I still think there's a way to um, uh, work with it. Um, I really have no big, I actually sort of like this just because it's different. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this, two. Yeah, and, not, uh, and I think I, I, I wanted to know more of his inspiration, what, what inspired, I mean, Gaudi, as far as Gaudi, but sure. But I think Mr. Vergas has to also show his his own inspiration, you know. And and I, I, I so anyway, I'm just going to leave that comment. Um, Uh, the tower is, is still seem pretty prominent to me, but uh, obviously it's part of the part part of the scale of the building. And I mean, without it, it wouldn't work the same way. So I'm just gonna leave it at that and see how you come up with your own. I need to just reiterate that. Mr. Sharp's comments about maintenance, the ability to maintain those gardens are key. Absolutely. Very astute comment. Thank you. That needs to be really addressed. And as the project went along, understand. Thank you. I'm going to ask staff to confirm. I have five people in favor of alternative one and three people in terms of the Gaudi with three people who could find this workable. That's correct. That's I just, correct. I just checked that myself. Check the vote. I'm going to now say that, for my own preference for the vote, that. Come please. <laughs> <laughs> I find this alternative to have more potential. Which. Alternative two. Thank you. To have more potential. However, I think there are some real problems with it. And I prefer the integration and passion that you're showing in this one to what you're trying to do here. But honestly, there are some real problems with it. I'm going to summarize the comments. We all feel that there's a great improvement in your redesign of your building, particularly in relation to the station and the way that you've adjusted and integrated the rest of the building in relation to the rest of the neighborhood, the site, the station, and adjacent buildings. With regard to the landscaping, we would like to see more landscaping, particularly at the entry, and there have been requests for other tree locations that could make a difference. In addition, we want you to pay great attention to how you're going to irrigate and landscape areas of that building because it is a crit critical aspect of this design. There have been several members of this commission who feel that you might want to take a look again at that service elevator, how it is expressed and integrated into the building. 
there's been a comment, and I agree with it, regarding all elevations should continue to link this building to its Hispanic tradition of thick walls and recesses. It is critical that this building continue to link with the Hispanic tradition that we ask for in these guidelines. I'm going to ask for a motion. I'll make that motion. Okay. Uh, what was the motion? Uh, to we continue? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you guys have to go to the planning commission. We're okay. Motion. We can apply. It's definitely continuous. To the planning commission? Yeah, definitely continuous. With those comments. Okay, if we're... If, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> Madam Chair? Yes. yes. I know. I would, I would like to ask you to go down the list. Oh, Lord. Briefly. Uh, compatibility criteria analysis and address those that they have been um, fulfilled or if you, that you're happy with that. I will add to the, the comments that the mass bulk and scale are acceptable. Mm -hmm. That we find this building to be in compliance with the city charter and municipal code. <laughs> I can't see that far. <laughs> it's consistent consistent with our guidelines. Uh, Compatible with the architectural character, character of the city, city and neighborhood. And sensitivity to adjacent landmarks. Yes, I think I incorporated that. Yes. Yes. And the use of open space and landscaping. Yes, landscaping. With well, pretty much there. Not, yeah. It's a little bit of work. But yes, you got it. Okay. Good. Thank you. All those in favor? Then to Planning Commission. Who made the motion? I made the motion. Second. I seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. Thank you.